From KC Born and Bred Ownership comes the most affordable and highest quality in Chiefs merchandise. For Chiefs fans, by Chiefs fans. Whether it's officially licensed items or unique custom conversation pieces, no matter the size, from grandbaby to grandparent, Noble Apparel has something for everyone. Best prices, best quality, Noble Apparel. Now with five convenient Kansas City locations. Off North Oak, Vivian, Holmes, Westport, and 68th Street. The ultimate fan experience awaits at Noble Apparel. Snap to Mahomes at his belt, sidestepping. Fires for the end zone. The pass is going to be caught. Touchdown, Kansas City, Patrick Mahomes. I thought he was just jumping in the stands and he grabbed a, he grabbed a camera. I was like, I was like, what the world? Firing down the seam, Tyreek Hill, 10, 5, touchdown, Kansas City. Set the tempo early, baby. Set the tempo early, baby. You are now listening to the official PM15 podcast. Presented by GASN Sports. Dedicated to NFL MVP Patrick Mahomes as he establishes his legacy and continues on his journey to bring a Super Bowl to Chiefs Kingdom. Featuring weekly guests, expert analysis, and fan interaction. Now, please welcome your hosts, Clint Schweitzer and Noah Groninger. Well, ladies and gentlemen, the weeks have dwindled down to days. Super Bowl 54 is upon us, and I almost can't believe I'm saying these words. Clint Schweitzer alongside Noah Groninger here on the official PM15 podcast. Noah, when we started this podcast this season, you heard it in the intro just now, that this podcast is following Patrick Mahomes on his journey to lead the Kansas City Chiefs to its first Super Bowl in 50 years, and it has happened. The Chiefs are here. It is actually going to take place. In Hard Rock Stadium coming up here on Sunday. Noah, has it been kind of surreal? How have you kind of spent these last couple of weeks? Is it has it really set in for you that this is actually going to become a reality? It definitely has not set in. I don't know if it will until kickoff. I mean, we're seeing the media down there. We're seeing all the coverage. It's on NFL Network. It's on ESPN. It's on your local news. It's on the world news. It is everywhere. The co- coverage is just fantastic. But it just still hasn't hit in that this isn't an AFC Championship game. This isn't a wild card game. This isn't week eight. This is the Super Bowl, something we have longed for since we were seven years old, watching Joe Montana tread out there for the Kansas City Chiefs in 1993 all season long. Then against the Steelers with the miraculous comeback win, the Oilers finally beating them, putting them down, and then moving on to Buffalo where we fell short and we thought it was right there. We were going to go to the Super Bowl. This is what we've been waiting for. Joe Montana, Marty Schottenheimer deserves it. All those great players in the past. Uh, the Tim Grunhards, Derek Thomas, James Hasty, just so many great players, like larger-than-life figures uh, as we were kids growing up watching these guys. And they were so close, and they just didn't get it done. So this is for them, finally making it to a Super Bowl. The Kansas City Chiefs are in a Super Bowl. Well, you know, I want to bring that up because you did a tremendous article for our website, which is GASNsports.com. Uh, yes, that's the Great American Sports Network. GASNsports.com is uh, our website where all of our podcasts are available and um, our articles, all of our content. No, you did a tremendous article this week that goes back and, you know, you were able to talk to what, 16 or 17 guys, yeah. uh, former players to get their thoughts on this. And we're going to use uh, some of that on this podcast here, just kind of Tell, tell us everybody you know what it was like to talk to some of these players and, and what we might have up uh, coming up here on the podcast. We're going to play a few of those sound bites that uh, are in the article, but just kind of take us through what that was like for you to connect with the, some of these players and if they shared kind of the same sentiment as you. I mean, they played the game. They were uh, just talk about what it's what it's been like for you. Yeah, I mean, this article uh, took about a whole week to gather all of the interviews, calling these guys, trying to find times in between both of our busy schedules, and uh, we were able to do it, and uh, it took about a whole week, and then I was finally able to finish it, and talking to these guys, I wasn't quite sure if they still had that connection and what it would really mean to them right now that this team is getting it done, and they're moving on, and they're going to play in a Super Bowl. I didn't know if it would feel like hey, we're living vicariously through them. This is like us being there. And so I had to ask them that question, just kind of what it meant to them and and if this is really for them and they feel like they're going along with them. And and we're going to hear from Tim Grunhardt and Bill Moss and uh, Kevin Ross 
and just what it means to them. And, and they are still tied to this. They love Kansas City. They love this fan base. They love this franchise. They talk about the great Lamar Hunt and what it means for Kansas City and Clark Hunt and the, uh, this franchise to bring the Lamar Hunt trophy home. It's It's been that name, the Lamar Hunt trophy, the AFC Championship trophy since 1985. And uh, it just means the world to Clark Hunt and this franchise, this fan base, the city uh, to bring that home and now play in a Super Bowl. And and these players, it's like watching their little brothers out there now. And and they are living vicariously through them. And they are they feel a part of this Super Bowl. And uh, so that that really rang true to me and powerful and really what I hoped it would mean to them. I hope that they would feel like they're going and they're not still looking at it as like, oh, we missed out. Like, this isn't us. It's not the same. Like, it really means a lot to them. And I loved hearing it. And you're going to love hearing these interviews because it's powerful stuff. Yeah, I can't, can't wait to hear uh, some of these sound bites. Now, if you want to hear from uh, all the players, you got to go to our website, gasnsports.com. Uh, the article's right there on the main page. Noah did a tremendous job with that. And uh, our Super Bowl coverage has been uh, going on really since uh, the clock ticked away on the AFC Championship victory over the Tennessee Titans. And really, that's the kind of perspective that we've wanted to bring Really, since we started doing this almost eight years ago, no, you think back to the 2012 season is when we really started laying the groundwork for what we've built here at GAS in sports. We started doing a podcast called the Outsiders Podcast, where we really just started interviewing former Chiefs players. And to think that that season uh, was 2-14, Romeo Cornell, all the whole thing kind of collapsed on us. And to think that here we are, you know, eight years later in a Super Bowl, sharing it with these former players Getting those perspectives, seeing what we've built in that amount of time, I mean, the, the amount of pride, I just can't even really get it out in words. And to see Patrick Mahomes hoisting that uh, Lamar Hunt trophy and to see Clark Hunt being able to do the same thing, I mean, it was just, it was unbelievable, you know, being there. I mean, you said what? You saw people hugging and crying. I mean, there's it's a, it's a scene in a city that is so hungry for this. It's beautiful to see it. And you, it's just time to revel in this occasion. Um, from no matter what happens here, you've got to re- relish this week and what this means being in the limelight like this. Is this not the most special thing in all of sports right here? It absolutely is. I, it's so special. I can't even, like you said, put it into words. And, and like I said, it really hasn't truly hit me yet. I don't know if it will till kickoff. I mean, I could be crying at kickoff. It's going to be crazy what the emotions are going to be like realizing like, okay, like I haven't really put it into my head, but now that I'm seeing the national anthem and I'm seeing the buildup, I'm seeing all the flashes of lights go off while people are taking pictures at kickoff. Like, oh my God, we really are in a Super Bowl and it's going to click and it, the motions are just going to flood in. Uh, so I could be a mess at kickoff. It'll be interesting to see. But you talked about that and me being at the game and I was there with my dad and able to share that with him and looking around. Yeah, I saw people crying, people hugging, people just in shock. And I think that's where I was. Like, I thought I would cry. I thought I would be hugging people, but I was just in shock. Like playing the Titans. I almost put myself back at that. I believe it was week 10 game. And I'm just like, no, like this is a week 10 game. We're not really going to the Super Bowl. This isn't possible. Like we've had so many devastating playoff losses and we've had so many great teams through the Marty years and Vermeil and even with Andy Reid, so many great teams. And last year, like we thought we were there for about 15 seconds until that penalty on D Ford. And just, this isn't like I'm going home and we've got just a week 11 game coming up next week. This isn't, and it still quite hasn't, this is the Super Bowl, something I've been longing for, for about 28 years of my life. And we are finally in it and have a chance to bring home the ultimate prize and be immortalized in history as Super Bowl champions. Well, It's unbelievable, Noah, but uh, here coming up, we're going to have to give our predictions on the Chiefs playing in a Super Bowl. But before we do that, (laughs) we want to take you to uh, some of uh, the sound bites that you were able to gather here uh, this last uh, week. You know, when talking to some of these former players, we've got three great ones for you. We want to go ahead and start off with um, Tim Grunhard, former Chiefs center that uh, played in the 90s, uh, was just the heart of that offensive line for so many years. And uh, let's take you to what he had to say about the Chiefs finally reaching uh, the pinnacle and uh, climbing that mountaintop all the way to the Super Bowl. I mean, it means a, a whole lot. I mean, you know, I think, you know, when you watch this team and, and you watch Patrick Mahomes and, and, and you watch kind of the way this whole season came about with uh, the defense kind of finding itself early and, Patrick Mahomes getting hurt and coming back, and uh, you know they they really earned everything they've gotten. Um, it hasn't been an easy season for them. You know it's it's been a lot of different challenges, and 
I think that Andy Reid uh, hit it right on the head when he talked about it at the press conference. His team has a lot of heart. And uh, as an older player, you know, watching these guys playing the right way and, and – and representing the Kansas City Chiefs and Kansas City Chiefs organization and Kansas City the way they have, it's just, it, it, I mean, it's, it's, it's great. It's awesome for us. We, we're enjoying every second of it. Um, one of the things that, that um, we always talked about with Marty and, and then later on with Gunther when I was playing is we wanted to be able to hand that trophy to Lamar with his name on it. Mm-hmm. And then later, and then later on with Clark, uh, you know, and um, you know I, that that trophy represents uh, one of the finest men that ever um, graced a NFL field or NFL locker room, and he had so much poise and and, and so much um, you know dignity and a, a big heart that you know. He was a guy that you really wanted to have success for, and, and, I, and I feel great that Clark uh, was able to hold his father's trophy because his father was a very, very important person in my life and really important person in a lot of people in Kansas City's life. I mean, I, I was speechless. Uh, you know, I, I just, I mean, it, it was just trying to take the whole thing in. It was surreal. And, uh, my wife finally told me to, this morning to say, hey, listen, just be quiet, because I keep saying, can you believe the Chiefs are in the Super Bowl? And I, I must have said it a hundred times last night, and then uh, the first thing I said to her this morning, she's like, yeah, you told me that last night. And, you know, but that's that's the way that we feel. I mean, I just, I am just so happy for this for this organization, and I'm happy for Kansas City, you know, of any fan base. Uh, you know they they've you know had the trials and tribulations of last second losses or you know teams that just weren't able to you know even on home field advantage uh, home field advantage um, finish off a finish off a season and and they've stuck with uh, with the team and with the organization and and uh, they they really deserve it and I know that's cliche ish and everything else but I mean I, I am dead serious when I say that. Um, when I when I saw the faces of the of the people in the crowd yesterday, that yeah, that was what really brought the emotions to me more than anything else. Because there's a lot of people that have been waiting a long, long time for this, and God bless them. Uh, you know they're getting it. You know, it popped in my head. You know, and, and Marty, we God bless him. Uh, you know, he's going through the things he's going through. But yeah. you know, Gunther Cunningham, who was uh, I was very close with him when he was the defense coordinator, and then mm-hmm. obviously later on as the head coach. He would tell us, especially you know, when he was the head coach, that all he wanted to do was hand that trophy to Clark Hunt and Lamar Hunt, and get in his car and drive off and have the uh, Arrowhead lights in his rearview mirror, and mm-hmm. then he would he would consider he would consider his his uh, coaching a success, and that's what he really wanted. I thought about him yesterday, and you know, just passing away recently, and yeah. and uh, how important that was for him. And, uh, you know, it, that that's what really hit me is, boy, Gunther would really be proud of this team. Really good stuff from Tim there. Noah, you really felt the sentiment. And, man, this guy's just so passionate. I mean, obviously playing for so many years uh, in, in the 1990s. Um, and we also want to get another stalwart, for, uh, defensive stalwart from the 90s, uh, Rock, Kevin Ross, um, was had some real poignant things to say about this Chiefs run and kind of what it means to him. <laughs> Well, I mean, it couldn't happen to a better city. I think they're the best, one of the better fans in the in the, in the nation. So you got good players. And it looks like it's going to be around for a while. So, like I said, I think it's going to be a, a good time down in Miami for the Chiefs. Oh man, I I think that's I think that's almost. I don't know. It's better than the Super Bowl, really. I mean, they 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 got the trophy back home, and uh, that's not, that's a very nice thing. I'm happy for. Her. Like the whole city, some of my closest friends uh, passed uh, last year, and they're probably smiling down down on the Chiefs as well. Mm-hmm. Well, I've, I've been watching them, and uh, they've been getting also slow starts. But yeah. I can't understand the thing that's scary about the Chiefs right now is even when you dominate them in the first half and all that kind of stuff, they're still winning the game, and that's 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 just scary. That's really scary. But they'll have their hands full with the with the uh, Niners. The Niners are, you know, oh, yeah. well balanced team as well. But uh, I just feel like the I don't know. I just feel like the Chiefs got too much firepower for them. But I'll say this: we had a couple guys, um, Tyron Matthew and uh, 
Xavier Williams. Yeah. Both were with me in uh, Arizona, mm-hmm. and uh, I can tell you this: you don't, you ain't, you ain't have to worry about those two guys right there. They'll, they'll bring it to them. They'll bring it. They'll bring everything they got. Mm-hmm. They'll be really, really enthusing. I'm, I'm expecting both of those guys to make big plays. Yeah, it is. It really is. They, they did a nice job. The coaching staff did a nice job. The players came along, did a nice job. I don't think they ever stopped believing in one another. It's just a matter, like you said, just matter juggling and filling the scheme out a little bit, and they did a nice job. All the management that I had with me, Jim Schaaf, Carl Peterson, Marty Schottenheimer, and then some of the players that I played with, uh, Deron, Albert, Louis Burris, Derek, uh, Derek Thomas would be really, really curious right now playing in Miami, being from Miami right now. So yeah. they'll do it for him. He'll be down there, and I guarantee you they'll, they'll, he'll have his spirit down on that field as well. I'm sure the city will be all red all week on pep rallies everywhere. And finally, uh, we have Bill Moss, who joined us on the Outsiders podcast, I believe, back in 2012 for the first time. He's been so gracious over the years to, to kind of share his perspective, um, obviously, is as dialed into the Chiefs as anyone out there. So um, it was only fitting that um, you were able to speak with Bill for uh, this wonderful project. Here's what Bill Moss had to say about the Chiefs reaching Super Bowl 54. Well, you know, they, when I got there, there was still a tie to to the Super Bowl Chiefs. Mm-hmm. You know, they were often often around the complex. Glenn Dawson was covering the Chiefs and doing, the, of course, the radio color commentary. And Bobby Bell would be there and John Senaru. And you would, you would just always see them at events. And so, you know, it, you were kind of tied to that Super Bowl, you know, even though we didn't get a chance to go there as a team. Yeah. And then, and then uh, you know, the... The Marty years, you know, we just kept getting better and better every year. You could see the team. And, you know, we we always knew that, you know, we didn't have the quote-unquote franchise quarterback. But we always believed that if we played good enough defense and, you know, took care of the ball and good special teams and pounded it and shortened the game, that, that we could beat anybody. And we believed in that. Uh, unfortunately, it never culminated into what, what everybody wanted. But watching this now come together the way it has come together, uh, it's just fantastic to see. Yeah, and you know, just just the whole uh, history and the legacy of, of which Lamar brings. And when you know you bring up his name, and he just the nostalgia that goes along with it, right? Everything that he was meant to the NFL. And having that finally to get the AFC trophy back in Kansas City, uh, the watching Clark and Norma hold that trophy really just, I mean, I don't know how there was a dry eye around because its you could just feel the passion from them. Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, I, I guess you never, you think you might know it watching it on television. You think you might have a good idea of what that feeling must be be like but I don't think I had any inclination of, of what it all encumbered and what it all felt and I, I think that I can say that for a lot of the former players that were there my ex-teammates and uh, alumni of the Chiefs that were there it's just the culmination of that is was just really powerful for me personally you know I, I just feel like you know, I've been a part of the Chiefs organization for a long time with the Chiefs ambassadors, and uh, you know, we're, you're talking 37 years, yeah. and 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 so you know all the players from the past, and you knew you know all the parts, you know all the people, you know all the stories, and just to watch that come to uh, a head, like just you didn't. It, I, I, I'm still at a loss for words. Really, it's just you know everybody. And you can just see them all there and see the joy in everybody's face. Noah, just hearing from those three, I can only imagine what it was like uh, talking to all of these players and, you know, just reading the article again. I got it pulled up here, GASNsports.com. Um, again, it just, man, it really brings it home because not only are, you know, are we huge fans, not only have we been members of the media now for, you know, what going on eight years um, to know that over the years we've connected with so many of these players, and I'm talking, you know, J.J. Burden, Barry Word, Mark Collins. I mean, so many of these guys, uh, Tamarit Vanover's in there, Kimball Anders, all these guys have been on our show, uh, our, our, our podcast over the years. To really, it, it just 
brings a fresh perspective. I don't think there's anybody out there that was willing to go through all this to to get these former players' perspectives, and I think it's really important. Well done, my friend. Well, thank you very much. And just to go back to these guys and what it means for them and the, the clips that you heard there uh, from my conversations with them, I mean, Tim Grunhard talking about Gunther Cunningham and how all he wanted to do was hand a trophy to Lamar and, and Clark, that Lamar Hunt trophy, get in his car, drive off with the Arrowhead lights in his rearview mirror. And he said that that would be a success for his coaching career. That's all he wanted to do. And and so, you know, Gunther's looking down, just so proud that we were finally able to do that. And uh, a lot of these guys talked about Derek Thomas, Lamar Hunt, Gunther Cunningham. Like they really truly believe in their heart that their spirits are going to be there down in Miami watching over uh, that stadium and that game. And they're going to be on the field with the players and the team down there. And they truly believe that. And I do as well. And and this meant so much to those three guys and, and so many more. And these guys that uh, were kind enough to uh, participate in this article for GS and sports us here. But to think about that, I mean, Derek Thomas, we've talked about it for so long and how he wanted that Super Bowl and, uh, he was kind of upset and hurt that uh, Neil Smith left and got two, and he never got one. And uh, talking about Kevin Ross, the Rock, and how he believes that Tyron Matthew and Xavier Williams going to make huge plays. He worked with them. He was their uh, Tyron Matthews defensive backs coach in Arizona, and he came on earlier with us uh, this season talking about what Tyron Matthew is going to bring to Kansas City, and he was 100% right how he brought the leadership, the swagger, and just brought everyone together and how smart of a football player he is. And then Bill Moss that you heard there talking about how he's been with the Chiefs for 37 years, his playing career, then moving on into uh, being a Chiefs ambassador and how he just feels a part of this organization. Like it's part of his life, 37 years that he's been a part of it. So just this is just a little bit of a glimpse at uh, what is in the article that I wrote that's on GASNsports.com. And uh, there's so many more great stories that you got to hear from guys like Snoop Minnis and Barry Word and Kimball Landers. And uh, who can forget Sean Smith back in uh, the uh, kind of early 2000s there uh, under the Todd Haley regime. And there's just so many great stories that you really got to go read this article. But we're happy to give you a glimpse here with uh, Tim Grunhard, Bill Moss and Kevin Ross. Well, unbelievably now, Noah, we're kind of sitting in a situation where uh, we're looking at predictions for this game. You look at what the San Francisco 49ers have done. Um, they were able to turn in a 13-3 and season. And, I mean, they've obviously just have a, a solid top-to-bottom roster, um, an opportunistic quarterback that hasn't really had to do a whole lot here in the playoffs. Uh, they have riding the, you know, definitely the, the coattails of a very hot running back in Raheem Mostert. George Kittle, the second-best tight end in the league. So you got Kelsey going up against George Kittle. That's a nice little storyline there. Um, but really, when you look at this, to me, the Chiefs are the better team. I don't think it's by a, a lot. I think that any team, any you know, anyone that wins this game, um, it, it's, I don't think it's going to be by a lot of points. I think you're going to be talking about um, you know, seven or under. The Chiefs have not lost a game by um, more than a touchdown uh, since 2017. So I think that this is going to be a game that's very close to the vest. And you know what? I think this is a game that the Chiefs may actually get out in front and make the Niners, uh, you know, play comeback on on the Chiefs. So I think that's mm-hmm. if that happens, the Chiefs are going to be in really good shape. I think you're riding the wave of, uh, you know, the, the former MVP and Patrick Mahomes. I, I, you have the better quarterback. You have the better weapons. And I think when it's all said and done, the Chiefs are just going to be too much offensively, even though the 49ers do a great job of getting pressure with their front four. I still think that plays into the Chiefs' strength because the Chiefs are able to carve up zone defenses. You've got uh, one of the, the Niners are probably going to do a lot of uh, single high safety sets, and I think the Chiefs are going to be able to get open and use their speed and get uh, keep moving the chains around it. That's just me. I've got the Chiefs 34-31, um, and that's what I'm going to go with here. Chiefs hoisting up the Lombardi Trophy, Patrick Mahomes, a Super Bowl MVP, and me crying like a baby and not going to work <laughs> the next day. Those are all my predictions. Those are your predictions. All right. I like it a lot. And I kind of agree with you there. I mean, the Chiefs have the far superior quarterback. They've got a good offensive line to deal with that just nasty Niners front. Uh, of course, Nick Bosa. And of course, who can forget D Ford out there? Uh, D Ford usually lines up uh, over the right tackle. So Mitch uh, Schwartz will be against D Ford most of the time. And I like that matchup uh, for the Chiefs. Uh, Nick Bosa could be problems going up against Eric Fisher. They may have to do something there with a chip uh, by the running back. By if Kelsey's over there, if there's a wide receiver over there, he may have to line up a little closer in. 
uh, tighter in and chip Bosa before he goes out on his route. So that'll be interesting to see uh, what they do. They may let Fisher uh, go against him one-on-one early on just to see how the matchup's going. And if he needs help, then they'll adjust and make that uh, change. Um, the secondary, of course, you got Richard Sherman out there. I think they're going to play a lot of, uh, like they do that cloud cover three, uh, that, uh, they brought over from Seattle and, uh, with Richard Sherman and the defensive coordinator Sala for the 49ers. And so I think that offensively, the chiefs are going to be all fire. They're going to be ready to go. And I think uh, this game ends up 38 to 34 with the chiefs winning. I think it's going to be a close game. I think the Niners, Offensive line is so strong, that run game. Uh, George Kittle's a great run blocker um, and a pass blocker. He's really the whole package, where Kelsey's just a supreme athlete, great at running routes, great catcher of the football, usually, although we've seen some drops in this uh, in the playoffs. So hopefully he gets that figured out for the Super Bowl. I think they're all going to be dialed in, locked in, and I don't think we're going to see as many mistakes as we did, maybe them sort of overlooking the Texans and Titans uh, in the playoffs here. But... The Niners offense, I just unless they can get that run game really going, I think if Jimmy Garoppolo is going to have to throw the ball without a heavy dose of play action, I think that plays into the Chiefs' hands, that plays into Tyron Matthew, uh, and honestly that plays into Traverius Ward and Rashad Breeland, who have had a great season since this defense has turned it around and been the number one defense since week 11. So um, it, it's all going to come down to uh, stopping that run game. What we're going to do against George Kittle, is that going to be Tyron Matthew? What exactly are we going to do there? Is that Dan Sorensen? I, I hope not, but it'll be interesting to see how we handle George Kittle and that run game. And uh, if the play action pass is working, then that could mean a Niners win. So it's going to be important. We stop the run. But like I said, I see the Chiefs winning this one 38 34. You know, we've sat here and watched, uh, you know, almost 30 Super Bowls uh, each in our lifetimes. I, I remember the first one that I remember actually watching was. Uh, 49ers and Bengals, um, you know, back in 1990. So, you know, thinking about that, I mean, <laughs> to actually have the Chiefs involved in this and the pomp and circumstance is, uh, you know, involving the Chiefs and you've got, you know, you've got J-Lo and you got Shakira playing at halftime and you've got, you know, people, someone famous singing the national anthem. I'm actually not sure who it is. I think it's a female pop singer. <laughs> I'm uh, not Demi sure Lovato. Okay, wouldn't have known that. Um, <laughs> glad that a gun wasn't to my head and was being forced to recollect that. And who could remember that? Commercials. Well, does exactly. So does that play when you're watching this? How, what does that do to your individual psyche when watching? Like we've sat there and watched 30 Super Bowls approximately, and that's all it's ever been is you're there and you're at a party and there's commercials and you know it's a pop culture event and there's amazing moments and there's you know someone like Janet Jackson and having a wardrobe malfunction and it's all the talk the next day, but now the chiefs are involved. How do you deal with as a fan, <laughs> the outside distractions, let alone the players. We know that it's got to be distracting for them, but as a fan trying to just enjoy this, what is this going to do to your psyche? Well, it's been all fine and dandy when the chiefs haven't been in. I mean, it goes to commercial, you get up, you go to the bathroom, you get another drink, you get some dip, you're at a party, you talk with your friends, Oh, man, I couldn't believe that happened. What's going to happen here? That commercial was funny. Uh, I can't wait till halftime. But with the Chiefs in this, I'm going to be hunkered down, probably by myself, if I'm not uh, watching the game with you. And I'm going to be a nervous wreck. I'm going to be a ball of nerves. Uh, longer commercials. Like, I I got to get back to the game. I can't have this. Longer halftime. I can't. Ha- I got to get back to the game. I got I, I to gotta figure out what happened. I got to win this. I can't, I can't handle it. I can't handle the longer commercials. I can't. I, there's nothing. I can't turn away to a different game like I could during the season when the game goes to commercial and got Sunday NFL ticket. There's 12, 13, 14 games on. I can just turn to a new one until the uh, Chiefs come back from commercial and kind of keep my mind busy. Like, it's it's going to be interesting, to say the least, the the emotions, the nerves. Uh, I'll probably, we just talked about doing this article, I'll probably hit up some former players during commercial and uh, get their thoughts because uh, I'm going to need to keep my mind busy and focused on something because uh, it's just going to be a ball of nerves, like I keep saying. Well, last year, the Super Bowl uh, kind of hit rock bottom when it comes to viewership with only 98.2 million people watching 
and uh, not a matchup a lot of people wanted to see in a game that was just horrendous. I think you're going to have the opposite this year. A lot of people talking about this being the most expensive Super Bowl ticket in some time. Last year, I believe the get-in was you could get in around for $1,000 by the time it was all said and done. And now you're talking about ticket prices hitting the five, dollars $6,000 mark just for cheap seats. I think with Patrick Mahomes involved, the viewership is going to be through the roof. This is The, the market research has shown that when Patrick Mahomes is on uh, in, in prime time, the viewers are tuning in. Patrick Mahomes is well known to be, you know, the face of the league for the next 10 to 15 years. So I think this is a, could be a crowning moment for him. This could solidify Andy Reid certainly as a Hall of Famer, but you know what? This could also get Patrick Mahomes into that conversation and only his second year starting, which is unbelievable. But I think that's where we are when it comes to the fact that, you know, if you're grading this on a curve, the Chiefs haven't been in a Super Bowl in 50 years. They've only been in one AFC championship game since 1993 and Patrick Mahomes has been to both of them two in a row and now a Super Bowl I'm sorry but the Hall of Fame isn't that far off for Patrick Mahomes for Patrick LaVon Mahomes not far off my friend yeah he would have to fall off the proverbial cliff to not be in the Hall of Fame Uh, we're talking about like you mentioned two AFC championship games a Super Bowl and if he wins it's going to be uh, a Super Bowl championship and a Super Bowl MVP, I'm guessing. Uh, and so you're talking about Hall of Fame numbers, uh, Hall of Fame accolades, and what he's been able to accomplish in his first two years starting. That's, I think, just almost unprecedented. And uh, winning the MVP last year with 50 touchdowns, and everybody said Drew Brees is going to win it. It's just, it, we got to give it to him. It's kind of a career achievement award on top of his amazing season, but. Patrick Mahomes overtook him by so much, just leaps and bounds, that they were just like, I really want to give it to Drew, but I have to give it to Patrick. Like, they just had to. They were forced to. When they all wanted to give it to Drew Brees, he just, he was that amazing last year. And yeah, there's been so many injuries this year, and the the numbers have gone down, but he's become a better overall quarterback and how he manages the game and uh, time of possession and just getting first downs and uh, not putting your defense out to dry there with the quick score, quick score, quick score, and and the defense is on the field for too many snaps. So uh, it's been miraculous to see this season play out. At, uh, when we were 6-4, and four, uh, Mahomes had the ankle injury, and then Mahomes uh, dislocates his kneecap, and Tyreek Hill was out to start the season, and Eric Fisher was out. Everybody was out. It was Chris Jones was out. Frank Clark wasn't, Clark wasn't playing well because – he was going through a several things, a shoulder and a, a stomach issue. So finally, everybody got healthy. The defense gelled. And here we are in the Super Bowl, ready to be immortalized in history forever as Super Bowl champions.